one of them is uh, the larger picture of what I've been involved with, which is the extent to which the military and intelligence establishment um, have influence on so much of our intellectual, academic, and professional life. I mean, as you know, I've been working on issues of psychologists' relation to torture, but this is a small part of it. Uh, there, so much of funding and for all kinds of social sciences, physical sciences, etc., come from military and intelligence sources, and it doesn't mean not all of this is necessarily pernicious, um, but a major concern, and it should be a major concern for people everywhere, is that we really don't know the broader picture. That we don't, you know, your individual study or your individual piece of work may seem unproblematic, but you don't know how it fits together when, thing, when the broader picture is in, is, is in secret, is classified, um, and it has a very corrosive effect on, on knowledge and on professional ethics, as we found out in the case of psychology, where um, the uh, American Psychological Association, the, actually the world's largest association devoted to mental health, much less psychologists, um, has been cor corrupted by its extensive ties to the military and intelligence establishments. I mean, these, the basic ties are not secret. They bragged about them um, for since World War II, but it influences their, their thinking, influences the profession, which parts of the profession get emphasized. Um, we know in the 1950s and 60s, the CIA had a massive, massive the so-called MK Ultra program was actually, that was a code term, but it's actually much broader than that, of research and work on brainwashing and interrogation involved hundreds and hundreds of academics uh, around the country and not just in the country, Canada and some other countries. Um, 180 universities, I mean the, the magnitude of this and very little of, of, what, of, what, of it ever became public. I mean, the only reason we even became aware of it, they destroyed the records, but they failed to destroy the fiscal records. And, and when, these, when it got released from the Freedom of Information Act, um, researchers were able to take the fiscal records, go to people and say, what did you do for the money, and gradually piece together the picture. We have only a little bit in that case. We don't know even what's going on today. Um, so I think that that's something that really is of concern to us, and that it has effects on our knowledge in ways that we don't know and may never know.